we are taking the cpu scheduling which is a very important aspect of uh, our operating system so we'll look about the cpu scheduling concepts and various cpu, CPU scheduling algorithm and why we need specific algorithm for different scenario so the objective today is to introduce this cpu scheduling and which is actually the basis the of all multi program operating system we'll talk about various cpu scheduling algorithms as well and we'll see how and where to use cpu scheduling algorithm and the term which is the cpu scheduling and process scheduling or thread scheduling these are often used interchangeably in various uh, uh, you know papers you see books you see and various internet material so the basic concept is that we want the cpu to be busy always we want that if some processes are waiting these processes are waiting we want them to assign it to cpu so that the cpu is always busy and the, the multi programming can increase now the cpu is allocated the cpu is allocated the process by first of all there is a short term scheduler then after that one once the short term scheduler says okay this has to be this process has to be given the dispatcher dispatches it from the ready queue or it takes the control from the short term scheduler and takes this process to the cpu so if it is a unique processor system there is no problem one process will may be running at a time but when we talk about multi programming that is we want multiple programs or multiple processes to run then we want to see that in order or in what order the cpu maximizes its utilization so we have two types of uh, cpu uh, you can say processes one is uh, input output bound one is your computation bound we have certain time which is given to it see i'll show you there are cpu cpu input output burst cycle what it means that when cpu burst is given means the time which is given what time the process takes in the cpu and it is a uh, computation bound so this is where the cpu burst is going on now the process is waiting so this is the input output burst now again it is uh, doing some task or the cpu is operating on it so it is cpu burst likewise this goes on and on so this is a cycle and uh, when the cpu burst end there is a request to terminate the execution now what we see here in the histogram we have a frequency of the uh, happening and also the millisecond the burst duration what happens at start it is very high then it becomes you know a kind of uh, constant we want that the cpu burst time should be in accordance with the maximum cpu utilization so the input output bound typically has many short bursts like this while the cpu uh, the input output bound i'm sorry and cpu bound have large cpu burst so in order to select the cpu shading algorithm we have to know about this also so what is a cpu scheduler as we just said that the process has to be bought into the memory first this is done by long term scheduler once they are in memory they are to be put in the ready queue and then now in this ready queue one process has to be selected this is done by short term scheduler now once this is been done once this is been done this has to be given to cpu this is done by the dispatcher so the these uh, can be the different form is you can uh, select the processes in terms of first in first out uh, in terms of process queue so you need to have all the records of the pcbs process control block because you are dealing with processes now there are certain types of uh, preemptive uh, scheduling which is preemptive and non preemptive scheduling and see in this uh, non preemptive or cooperative scheduling what happens the process is allowed to run to its completion it is not being disturbed it is never disturbed it is allowed to complete right and uh, there is no choice in terms of scheduling because there is no no preemption but we'll see about that also in terms of preemptive scheduling the the process if even if it is working it may be temporarily suspended it can be sent to a waiting state if, from the running state it can be sent to a waiting state but what problem can arise see if you have process here p1 this is updating its data and you have just preempted it so p1 comes out from the cpu now you put p2 inside so now p2 has taken the place of p1 
P2 is on the CPU now it is being execute, exe, executed or it is under execution now this PT, P2 is dealing or it is want, wanting to process the data or it is requesting or it is seeing the data of P1 but P1 was not updated P was not properly updated so there will be inconsistent see what P, P2 will be viewing because P1 is not updated properly. We have a dispatcher. Dispatcher is very important because as we said when once the ready queue is there in this ready queue which process has to be selected is divided is devised by or is formulated by the short term scheduler now CPU who who is the authority who is the component who is the module uh, which is the module which takes this process to CPU it is nothing but the dispatcher. So dispatcher is the module that gives control of the CPU to the process which is selected by the short term scheduler. So what task it, it applies or what are the process first is the switching constant this is p1 this is p2 p1 has to be taken now that means p1 all the all the state all the information has to be kept and p2 all this information it has has to be reinstated in the cpu so we have we also ought to know it may be possible p2 might have been reintroduced so p2 might have worked along it has been executed for certain point so it has to be restarted again so dispatcher has to be as fast as possible because dispatcher is invoked for every process as we said long uh, long term scheduler it has low frequency short term scheduler has very high frequency but dispatcher in spite of being high frequency or along with being high frequency it has to be uh, very less in the latency that is the dispatch lessons, uh, latency that is the time it takes for the dispatcher to stop one process and start another running this is the dispatch latency we want it to be as minimum as possible then we have a scheduling criteria scheduling criteria is based on various aspect because different cpu scheduling algorithm they have different properties as we see just now and the choice of particular algorithm may favor one class of a process over another what are the criteria first is cpu utilization we want the CPU utilization to be as maximum as possible. Throughput, that is the number of process which is completed, number of processes which are completed per unit time. This is the throu throughput of the um, criteria or you can say you, the CPU util utilization, this throughput of number of process which are coming has to be as maximum as possible. Then we have turnaround time. That is when you submit the process and the time it completes, the time in between is the turnaround time. That is the time complete time of completion time of completion minus time of submission this difference is nothing but the turnaround time and what is the formula because now the turnaround time is basically the time it has got in the cpu and the time it has wasted or it not wasted i must not use this this word it has uh, passed in waiting in the ready queue or say may some uh, input output is going on so cpu burst time plus waiting time is actually the turnaround time how about the waiting time Waiting time, as I just said, the sum of the period it spent waiting in the ready queue all the time it, it was waiting in the ready queue. This is the waiting time. So the formula will be the turnaround time minus the CPU burst time. The response time. Response time is first you have submitted the request. The first point you get some response. I'm not talking about the total completion. I'm just saying the time the first response you receive. This is the response time. So what is our criteria when we are uh, dealing with the CPU scheduling? First of all, we want to maximize the CPU utilization, we want to maximize the throughput, we want to minimize the turnaround time, waiting and response time. All three, these has to be minimized as much as possible. So scheduling algorithms, which process has to be selected from the ready queue, which has to be allocated to the CPU, they are various. First of all, first come first serve, there is no problem. The process which has come first will be allocated first. And the PCB of the process is linked on the onto the tail of the ready queue in the first come first serve. So whenever the CPU is free, it the uh, the it gets the process at the queue's head. Means here is the process. This is the head. So whichever when whenever CPU is free, it will get this. This is done. It will get this. This is done. This it will get this. So it will be a sequential form. And the way average waiting time, as you see here, is not minimum, because there will be a convoy effect. See, just assume that this is the scenario. These three are taking just one, two, say three burst time. Now this is taking say 50 burst time. So the convoy is there when, whenever you are, you know, uh, whenever there is an army 
convoy going on or a convoy of some some big minister then all the other people uh, or the all the resident have to wait all the bikers i or the um, you know the people who are on the roads have to wait even if this guy only wants to cross the road he has to wait for the for all the time till the convoy passes this is the convoy effect when process wait for a big one to get off this one to get off so this is uh, we we can have a, a non front preemptive version preemptive version but we'll see the non preemptive because the, the process keeps the cpu until it releases it this is not at all advisable for time sharing system because at that time you want if every process to give to get some equal amount of time but this is not possible here we'll take an example these are the processes p1 p2 p3 it requires 24 unit time to complete this required 3 and this required 3 because they if p1 has come it will be allotted first it will complete till 24 then p2 will be allocated and then it will complete for 3 then p3 will come it will be allocated sequentially now what is happening here is this p1 is waiting zero time but p2 has to wait all along till the p1 complete this is the convoy effect now p2 has to wait till this time 24 so this is the waiting time p1 is zero p2 is 24 now p3 has to wait with for p1 to complete and p2 to complete so 24 plus 3 that is 27 it has to wait so 0 plus 24 plus 27 by 3 this is the average waiting time this is 17. now suppose the order is changed let us change the order p2 has come first p3 has come first and p1 has come the the maximum cpu burst taking time p1 has come last p2 will only because it has just come and uh, because it has come first we'll put it in the first in first out zero waiting time for p3 three waiting time and for p1 only three plus three that is p2 and p3 completion six waiting time so zero plus six plus three by three this is three this is much better but convoy effect short process behind long process then we have shortest job first scheduling now this is quite um, not very uh, implementable type of scheduling because this says that if we have these processes p1 now this is executing then p2 p3 p4 we will try to find out which of them is having the shortest time to complete how to find that this is a difficulty this is very difficult to know in advance that which of them is going to be completed first how to anticipate how to anticipate right and if uh, at all the times are time are same then we'll apply the first come first service so this sjf can't be implemented at the level of short term scheduling because there is no way to know the length of the cpu burst how to anticipate how to find out uh, that who is going to be completed first but let us try to predict the length of the next cpu burst there are various ways so the sjf can be uh, either preemptive or non preemptive as we said that for fifo first or sorry first come first server serve is a uh, non preemptive uh, we established that sjf can be preemptive it can be non preemptive preemptive and non preemptive means preemptive means if if a process p1 is running and p2 or p3 comes and this has shorter time than p1 p1 will be taken out it will be taken out and p2 will be given chance whichever is less and this is just knowing that this is the shortest remaining time first because it, if the short the time remaining for p1 is lesser than p2 and p3 p1 will be allowed to complete otherwise p2 will be taken in non preemptive sjf the current place or current process is allowed to finish its cpu burst then only p2 and p3 will be catered as we just saw it is very ideal so it is it has a minimum average waiting time for the set of processes let us take an example first of all this p1 has come this arrival time is this is very important the arrival time it has arrived at 0 and burst time is 7 so whenever when p1 has come no one is there so p1 is, will be allocated this is non preemptive so it cannot be preemptive it will go up till 7 after that because till 7 all has come see this p4 has already arrived because it has come at 5 but the p1 has completed till 7 so all have arrived now for the next next sequence we will see whichever he is having the less time or which will be doing or executing in lesser time p3 so we'll take p3 it will take one time this is done now again we'll see which one has to be taken 4 4 which one which one is uh, less because both are same 
so we'll go with the first come first serve so we'll take e2 it will complete for four now all this is complete this is complete all are complete only p4 p4 is remaining p4 will be given the chance so the average waiting time for p1 is zero p3 is seven and uh, p2 is no not seven see p3 is has got uh, the execution or the CPU time at 7 but P3 has arrived just at at 4 so 7 minus 4 3 will be the time for P3 P1 is 0 now how about uh, this uh, P2 P2 has come at 2 and it has the got it has got time at 8 so 2 8 minus 2 that is 6 so this is the time how about P4 P4 has arrived at 5 where it was being taken P4 was taken at 12 so you have to subtract 12 and 7 right so you get 12 and uh, this subtraction because 5 12 minus 5 so you get what you get 7 you get 7 so these are the all the time because you have to subtract the arrival time also 0 plus 6 plus 3 plus 7 by 4 is 4 this is the average waiting time now let us come to the uh, preemptive time now p1 because there is no one so p1 will be given chance it has completed till 2 but uh, and by the time p2 has arrived now this is having a shorter time than this what is the remaining 7 minus 2 so the reverse time is 5 its time is 4 so which will be taken 4 p2 will be given chance it will go up to 2 but by the time it has gone for 2 unit of time p3 has come and it has lesser time because 4 minus 2 is 2 and this is 1 so 2, two and 1 which is lower one so p3 will be given chance after that after that what will happen now because p2 is having a lesser time than others 4 5 2 which is having lesser 2 so p2 will be given chance then after that because now this has a lesser time 4 and 5 so this will be given chance 4 so the the uh, you know you can say that p1 will be taken last because it has the largest time which is remaining p1 will come here it will be completed and you know i just uh, discussed how the how to find the uh, waiting time because we have to find out the waiting time with the this is the average waiting time this will be this which is equal to 3 and we see this this is better sgf preemptive is better how to determine the length of the next cpu burst you know you can estimate it there are various things like this can be done using the length of previous cpu burst like this was the previous cpu burst we can use the exponential averaging like this and you can guess the time you can guess the time okay if it has taken uh, this much time previously what it is going to take in the next this is how it can be implemented now we have priority scheduling also the we can have preemptive as well as non preemptive priority scheduling in the preemptive priority scheduling the cpu is preempted if the priority of the newly arrived process is higher than the priority of the current one but in non preemptive priority scheduling the new process is put at the head of the red ready queue right then we have other options also this equal priority if the equal priority are there they are rescheduled in the first come first serve order so how these priorities are defined it can be internal based on time limits memory requirements and number of files and externally means it can be some other you know it can be what is the importance of process process what is the political factor of the uh, situation of the computer all these can be taken but there is a problem there is a problem of starvation in priority what happens if some priority if uh, these two processes are coming and they have higher priority the the processes with lower priority will never get a chance so they will be starved they will not get food to eat they will be starved so what is the best idea whenever some some other process are coming just increase the priority of these two lower lower priority processes then this is the solution which is called the aging so this is technically or you can say the increasing the priority or the number that is some number the priority of the processes that are waiting in the system for a long time so they will never be starved then we have round robin scheduling so this is specially designed for time sharing systems this is just like first comes first server first serve but it involves the preemption so there is a time quantum involved this time quantum is very important the ready queue is treated as a circular queue so this will be circular queue 
first this will be taken for time some time then it will be kept back in the tail then this will be taken kept it back in the tail and likewise so the ready queue is treated as a circular queue and cpu scheduler goes around this queue ready queue allocating the cpu to each process for a some some time interval this is one co time quantum and this time quantum can be in any way anywhere between these so the ready queue is kept as a fifo queue of processes now what cpu scheduler does it will select the first process from the ready queue set a timer to interrupt after one co time quantum and then it will dispatch the process so what what can happen it can, it may happen that the process may have burst time which is less than this one time quantum so it will release voluntarily but if the process has cpu which is uh, cpu burst which is longer than one quantum then it will go off it will cause an interrupt to the operating system then this process will be put in the back that is tail of the ready queue and other will be taken if there are n process in the ready queue and the time quantum you have decided is q then each process each process gets how, how much uh, cpu time that is that will be 1 by n you know 1 by n of the cpu time in chunks of at most q times uh, q time units at once so no process waits more than n minus 1 into q times this is time unit so the rr performance round robin performance heavily depends on one thing that is the size of the quantum you have taken if you have taken quantum time quantum as very large it is simply equal to first in first out because all will be completed before the time or quantum time will elapse but if you have taken q as small time quantum as small there will be various switching there will be context switch and that will be high overhead so we have to reduce this context switch time so that in order to uh, reduce this context switch time we will take the quantum time as good as possible so just take an example of round robin the time quantum is 20 so what will happen p1 has come 53 p1 will be given chance p1 has completed minus 20 after it, it will be preempted so the time remaining is 20 33 okay now p2 will be given chance 17 17 minus 20 negative so it will be completed it will be completed let me put a tick now again p3 will come this, this is simply first come first servers fall with the preemptive and uh, preemption and preemption is one quantum the quantum time is 20 20 uh, unit time now p3 has come 68 minus 20 48 now 24 24 minus 20 now 4 so all these are done again p1 will come 33 33 minus 20 30 it is already completed so this will never come 48 minus 20 28 4 minus 20 negative so it is completed now next all these are done all these are done now again p1 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 will come these are all done sorry till here p1 will come 13 it will complete because 13 minus 20 negative it has completed 28 28 will come 28 minus 20 8 is left again it p3 will come 8 8 unit see 8 unit so it has high average turnaround than sgf but the response is better so we want the time quantum should be such that the context switching is as less as possible we'll see the scenario where you increase or decrease the quantum see if the process time is 10 and the quantum you have taken is 12 the context switch is zero there will be no context switch there will be um, no context switching in the in the processes but the thing is that the time is process this quantum is very huge i am just taking an example but if you take it as as a quantum as 6 context switch will, will be only one taken an example but if you take quantum as very small the context switch is very high this we cannot accept so turn around time also depends on the size of the quantum as we just saw these are the processes these are coming these are the times and when we take one quantum it will be like this say four quantum it will be like this so we want the average time or turn around time to be as least as possible so we'll go along with either six or seven time quantum this is the time quantum so this uh, we have talked about the scheduling algorithm but this is not done we will be taking because this is not complete actually will be taking the multi level queue and multi level queue feedback scheduling is also there till the time
थैंक यू सो मच टेक केयर ऑफ यूर सेल्फ